everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And today I'm going to talk just about hummingbirds and try to touch on a lot of things that people have asked about and things I may not have talked about. And let's kind of go over things. Some of you tell me, oh no, you've only got one hummingbird or, oh, by the way, that is a hummingbird sitting on a nest with two babies. You'll see her. She's been here. This is her fourth nest. You know, I started with just a couple. It was a big deal to see a hummingbird around here. And you got to remember, if one of them is a female, she's on her fourth nest behind me, they can have like two, four, or six, or eight babies. Then those babies stay in this area, and when you've got feeders out, they learn that this is where mom got their food, and then they come back, and then they have babies, and that's what happened. It builds, and then of course they bring others because others see them, so they'll come in. So one is good, especially if it's a female, but one is good because it will bring others. So don't get discouraged. One is really, really good. The other thing people ask me, and we talk about sugar all the time, the only sugar that they can digest is white granulated sugar. It will say on it granulated white sugar. Cane sugar is better. You can use sugar beet, beet sugar. That will work too because it's sucrose. That's the only thing they can digest. It's just like you couldn't go out on the field and eat hay and munch hay all day. You would never be able to digest it. Well, they cannot have brown sugar, honey, molasses, juice, nothing like that. And no dye. They absolutely don't need dye. So don't do dye. When getting hummingbird feeders, I've gone over all those. Try to get seats on them. You don't have to. They'll use anything. I mean, I made my own seats. I've got a lot of videos on that. I'll put the links underneath. But you can make your own seats for them out of wire. And the wire is really thin wire. It's like, some people want to know the gauge. 30, 40 gauge. Remember, they can sit on the edge of a leaf. They're so light. So it's, the gauge isn't that important. You can even use pipe cleaner if you didn't have anything else. You can twist it. They have been using pipe cleaner. I made a couple with pipe cleaner, and they do use pipe cleaner. And it's so easy. You're just going to twist it. I showed you on the other video. And then you just put the part that's been twisted, you know, the pieces behind the flower. You twist it. It literally takes seconds. And that's it. And then you shape it to the size you want. And look, right here while I was talking to you, it's done. It's that, that easy. As far as cleaning, there's different ways of cleaning it. Some people say don't use a bleach and water solution. Some people use a vinegar. I do a vinegar. I do um, also organic soap. I was using this organic soap for a while. It's just a, a soap made with coconut oil, but I can't get that brand. And what I do is it's easy. I can just keep this on the counter and then take, I use a toothbrush. I take a toothbrush and then when I take it apart, I can easily, easily get a toothbrush in there and look how nice it goes all the way around, even in this small opening. And then you can scrub it with a toothbrush and just rub your toothbrush on the soap, scrub it really good and rinse it really good. So you can get like a baby organic soap or something if you want to do that. So on the soap, I told you this company no longer makes this soap. I went ahead to a company called Piping Rock and I buy a lot of, not a lot, but some stuff there. And I saw that they had some soap that was organic. So I went ahead and bought that. And I can do the same thing with that because it's organic. And use that to do a quick cleaning on the hummingbird feeders. I'll put the link down below. It might be worth something just to check out. They've got a lot of different products there. I'm going to probably get some gluten-free flour there. They had a peanut flour. So I'm going to look through the different things they've got. But you can check them out and see if you want to get a bar of soap or if there's something worth looking at. Um, you can use your vinegar solution, anything you want to use. But I've been using the soap and it works really, really good. It's easy to use because I can just leave the bar of soap on the counter and then just rub it and then wash it really good and rinse it really good. I love toothbrushes as far as cleaning my hummingbird feeders. And I, I'll get a whole video on that so I can show you exactly, but I can bend them too. So you can get a toothbrush, you can get like four for a dollar at the 99 cent store, dollar stores they sell them. And then you can bend them and you can get them to fit whatever hummingbird feeder you're using. Because some people like the wide mouth ones, which is really good because you can get in there easier. But with the bent one, you can bend them and then you can bend them backwards. 
and you can scrub it backwards. See how easy it is to clean when you scrub them backwards? You can scrub in the flour, and that's really good. So you can bend the toothbrushes by using a candle, lit candle. As soon as it gets soft, you bend it. I'll get a video up to show you exactly how I do it. The other thing is, if you have got a cosmetic store, you can pick up a mascara brush. I've seen some of these for sale online for like $5 to clean hummingbird feeders. Well, secret, if you don't have a, a cosmetic store, you can go to any dollar store, pick up any of the mascara that shows they have a brush, wash it really good, there's no big deal, wash it, and then you've got yourself the perfect brush to clean any hummingbird feeder. That's what I do. I use old mascara brushes, wash them really good. So that's a good cleaning tool. Another cleaning tool that I use is a plain old brush. This is just a brush, and I can get in there and brush the whole thing really good, and I can use this on my bar of soap as well, and then I can brush it. I can brush the inside, and sometimes I can even get way deep inside the container, and I can wash it that way too. And you know what? If all else fails, a stick, a paper towel, you simply roll the paper towel really tight around the stick. It's, I do this too. You don't have to go get a whole bunch of stuff. A bread tie. Twist, twist this on. I wouldn't dip this in the soap, but I would just go ahead and you just put that in there. I didn't twist it on that good. You can clean almost any hummingbird feeder with a paper towel and a stick and a bread tie. So that's, that's another thing. So toothbrushes. And we talked about the wires. Let's see, what else have we talked about? Um, a few of you have come in and asked me about these cups. And a lot of people have come in, been very helpful to say they found them at the dollar stores. And another person from a restaurant told me they call them ramekins. So they're just little food cups that when you get takeout, they put, um, you know, they put in sauces and different things. And then people, most people throw them away. And I make hummingbird feeders out of them. I paint them. And they are easy to wash. Somebody asks, well, what about the paint? The paint doesn't wash off. I haven't had a problem with it washing off. And if it eventually wears off, you can repaint it or just make another one. They literally cost like a penny or two a piece. I even decorated this one with a little hummingbird. You can use permanent marker. That's fine too. So that will work. And that's really all there is to it. These are really nice because you can make things. We'll get into that hopefully as summer goes on. I mean, I made this. This is something I picked up at the dollar store. And I put the wire around. And look, I can put multiple cups on there. And then what you do is you make the hummingbird formula. One cup of water to a quarter of a cup of granulated white sugar. And just fill these cups up, you know, wash them each time when you take them out, you know, from uh, being outside, bring them in the house, wash them, wash them each time, and then you put your cups back and store the rest in the fridge. You can store it for a good week. In the refrigerator is not a problem. So you can store it in the refrigerator. But these are just, you can make all kinds of things. I'm going to hopefully get the video up on this one. Just a little food container. And I made this. Whoops, better not spill it. And I can hang this, and they've been feeding on this too. So it's not just you make this to hold. I really don't hold it. I have no reason to hold it. I don't have time to sit around holding to have hummingbirds come all the time. Do I? But um, you can do things with them. And that was the whole idea is to get this started so you can do things. You can find all kinds of containers and cut a hole and drop this in. And... You know what, we'll get into that on another video. And I think I've covered a lot of this on this stuff. Let's see. Um, what else have you asked me? I wrote a couple things down. Ants. We have an ant problem usually in the fall. And I do have use ant guards. And that is where you would hang. I don't have one on me. I'll, I'll show it on the video. I'll show it. I make them also. And basically, you have a wire that comes through. The cup is full of water, and then you have a wire where you actually hang this onto something, and then you hang your hummingbird feeder underneath, and they can't cross the water. That's one thing. Ants don't like to swim. So you can't get ant guards, and you can buy them online. I think I've seen them different places. I believe eBay's got them. You can buy metal ones on eBay. I think they're copper for like 3 or $4. If I find it, I'll put the link on underneath. 
A uh, lot of people put Vaseline and oil and stuff. I've tried that. For me, it doesn't work because as soon as it gets dusty and we live up in the, well, we we'll live in the city really, but we're up in the hills and so dust is all over. And as soon as the Vaseline or oil gets dusty, it creates another path for them to crawl on. So they can crawl, crawl right over it as soon as it gets a little dust. So I use the ant guards when I need to. Or if you're making your own hummingbird feeders and you've got to see, let's see this one. Oops, I got hummingbird food in there. Let's see if I can take this out. No. All right, I'll take this out for a minute. If you're making your own, I make mine from peanut butter jars sometimes. You can sit this in a bowl of water and they can come feed. And then when they feed from that, the ants can't get to it if you've got it sitting in a bowl of water. So that's another way. There's different ways of keeping. Ants are easy to keep away. Somebody told me they have squirrels. I have never had a squirrel yet try to get to a hummingbird feeder. So that's that's a little different. Um, otherwise, you will have to get a squirrel guard or hang it in a place that the squirrels don't go. Because I've never had squirrels even think about touching them. I don't know why. They just don't. Okay, so we've gone over the gauge and cleaning. We've gone over that. Okay, fighting. A lot of people have said their hummingbirds are fighting. We right now here don't have as many hummingbirds as we have in the winter, let's say late summer into winter and early spring because a lot of them have moved on. So we've got, I'm going to say right now, quite a few hundred. And then during the cooler times, we have thousands. We have a lot of babies right now, and like she's got two babies up there, and the babies are kind of finding their place and becoming a little dominant. So there's been quarreling, but no major fighting. The best thing you can do with the feeders when you've got them fighting is to make sure you've got them separate, because they're going to create or try to do a territory. They're going to say, this is theirs. So usually siblings are pretty good. They'll stay with each other, but they'll try to get, you know, the territory and say it's theirs. So you want to space them out. I would definitely space them out. Here, we have so many feeders, and they, they don't have a fear of running out that we don't have a lot of fighting, especially all winter. They're very little. People have watched the videos I put up, and there's thousands and thousands feeding, and why are they doing that? Because... They may wait, they're very patient, they'll wait in all the trees around here, but they know that there's food. If you let your feeders run dry, and then they come and they check it and there's nothing there, they now develop a fear of, I've got to get there before anybody else, because there won't be food for me later, and then that's when the fighting's going to start. It's basically like people. If you had to stand in line and know that, if you were going to a buffet, th there would be no food for you by the time you got up there. You'd be trying to push your way up front and get there first and all that. Well, here, they don't have that fear. They'll wait their turns, they'll wait in the trees, and then they'll come, you know, when they see that they have time. They take their turn. They literally take their turn and they all come in and they all feed. So, don't allow them to create that fear of no food. So, this way there's no panic. And that should work. That should help, I would say. Uh, going back to the recipe as far as boiling water. I boil the water in the beginning. I've got the whole recipes up there on how I make it. I start it with boiling water, um, just barely boiling. I stir it until the sugar starts to melt, and then I top the rest with cold water. But do I boil all the water? No, you don't need to boil all the water. Do I use bottled water? Right now, the only water um, that I'm using have been just their tap water because they're only using a mild chlorine in there. If they had chloramine, that doesn't dissipate. Chlorine disappears. But chloramine does not. That's hard on fish. Then I would use bottled water. If you can drink your water and you're safe, then I would say your hummingbirds will be safe too. Because remember, they are drinking out of sprinklers, they're drinking out of people's gardens, what's coming out of the hose, and they're fine. So keep that in mind. If you want to use bottled water, that's that's fine. That's perfectly up to you. You know, that would be fine. But if you can drink it pretty much in hand, they can drink it. Kind of like if your kids can drink it, then your hummingbirds can drink it. So I think I've covered most of the questions because a lot of them are pretty much the same. As far as how long you should leave your feeders outside, I don't have to worry about that. I fill them 
many times a day, so I've got to take them in because we have that many hummingbirds here. But I would say in the warm weather, I would say three times, um, about every three days, take them in. If it's cooler weather, you could leave it as long as it looks nice and clean up to five days. Kind of use your own judgment on that. Look at it and decide on um, what you think if it looks clean. Again, if it's in the sun, direct sunlight all day, it might create a mold. So then you definitely want to take it in and clean it really, really good with a toothbrush and possibly a bleach solution or vinegar solution. A few of you have told me you've been buying the formula for hummingbirds and they're not drinking it. I don't buy it, so I don't know anything about it, but I have heard that. If they taste it and there's something wrong with it, they're not familiar with it, they don't like it, they know it's not good for them, they won't come back either. So that's another thing. So if they're not drinking the hummingbird food that you're buying, then I would suggest go ahead making it. I showed you in one of my past videos how you can even use warm water from a coffee maker or a microwave. You don't have to have a, a stove or an oven, you just need to get that water warm enough to melt the sugar. So either one of those will work. Other people have asked me why they only have one or two. They had eight last year. They had a half dozen, a dozen, dozens of them. Here's the thing. You don't know what your neighbors have because your neighbor could be blocks and blocks away. If your neighbors have a lot of hummingbird feeders out and they've got an abundance of food somewhere, even if they ate at your house, let's say, last year, then they're going to stay where they find the food. So keep that in mind. If they find a food supply and they're happy with it, they'll stay there. You can't force them to come to your house except to make sure you've got enough food out. Because if they find your food and they find that your food is constant and always there, so let's say you take it in when it's low and you wash it up and put it right back out, and they know they've got a good food source, they're going to stay where the food source is. Remember, they're not just eating... Jeez. Yes, I, I'm almost done. They're not just eating your nectar. This is not their sole food. This is actually a very small part of their diet. They're eating insects, they're eating pollen, they're going into plants and trees and looking for all kinds of stuff. So they need a combination of the nectar and pollen from the flowers. This is a supplement. If they don't have enough, then they know that they've got this. Hot days, of course, when the weather gets warmer, they want more of it. This is an important part of their diet because nowadays, it depends on where you live, we have weed abatement. So we have to clear a lot of the native weeds away and they eat, let's say, tobacco plant, which is a the long yellow flower. They feed on that. That's a big part of their diet. But if they can't find it, then they need to find a food source. They could almost live on this if they had to, but they still would need some protein, which would be the insects which you'll see them looking around the eaves. Do you ever see a hummingbird poking around the eaves? They're looking uh, in spider webs to see if there's any little insects there and they'll steal from the spiders. And then, of course, when they're nesting, they take spider webs and use that to build their nests. They do that too. I have a compost bucket in the kitchen and when I bring it out here, I've been leaving it out here because I'm not sure where I'm going to put it in my garden. And she found it and found out, well, gee, I've got food. That's where she gets her fruit flies from out of my old compost bucket. See all the fruit flies? I've got flowers because they feed off of everything, even the tomato flowers and, and all the different flowers, the, the lettuce flowers, and a compost bucket here full of fruit flies. She had it made. So she figured she was just going to nest here and have her babies right here. She is the same one that nested on my kitchen window. We're almost positive on that. And a lot of these that are flying close by that she doesn't mind, I guarantee you they're her siblings. They could have even been from last year because there's a certain amount of birds that can come close to her nest and she probably knows that those are okay. They're her siblings. If they're not her siblings, she will chase them off. So remember, fruit flies are important. So I didn't mean to leave the bucket out here, but I rotate the bucket. So I'll bring out a new bucket with, oh, just scraps from that I didn't use, peels from, let's say, uh, 
I could say squash, but we've been eating the peel. If there's apple peels in there or leftover papaya that Gary's been cutting up, it gets in the bucket and then I bring it out here. I think about composting it here or in the garden. I'm on my deck right now, my balcony. Um, but if I leave it here, it creates fruit. Fruit flies come to it and then she hangs around the bucket and she collects those too. She probably will go inside. I've seen them go inside. They're probably looking for little tiny fruit fly maggots as well because that they would love. I think I've covered pretty much everything that I can think of right now, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great questions. But yes, that is her fourth nest. She had two nests that were on the other side of the house. For two years, she nested on my kitchen window and had multiple nests. Each year she built three, but this is the first time she's had four nests because what she did was she had one nest right, oh, not far from here, just around the corner. She built it on the wire. She raised one nest. Then she went back and had another nest. And then what she did, I'll do the whole story on that because I've got all the videos on that. She built another nest so as soon as the babies hatched and were big enough where she didn't have to sit on them, she laid another nest. So she was now servicing two nests at the same time. And as soon as she was done with those, I thought she was done. She took the nest apart as soon as she raised the third one, came back and built it here. She must have felt, well, this is a good spot. My computer is like five feet from here. And she looks in. She actually, when I leave the screen door open, she comes in and hovers and watches me. And I have to chase her out and close the screen door. She's very curious. So I think I have answered everything. Go ahead and ask questions. Please bear with me. I get thousands of questions and comments a day and a lot of times what I do is I just go to a video and I start answering all the questions so I never know what video I'm going to answer first. It's kind of whatever pops pops in there. I try to go to the newest one and answer and then I rotate around but I'm doing my best. It's just us. I'm not real good at that because I'm trying to garden and get everything done so I am trying to answer the best I can. I think I've answered everybody's questions for now. I'm going to go back and work in the garden today. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to leave her alone. She doesn't mind me. I don't like peeking, but I did peek, and there are two babies. And, um, like I said, ask questions. Thank you, everybody, for all your wonderful comments. And I guess with that, yes, I made my earrings if somebody asked. It's got hummingbirds. Oh, I think I have a necklace I made, too. So have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. One noisy rooster. What do you think? She doesn't care. You've been all over my table before I started. You checked everything out to see what had food in it. That had food in it, that had food in it, and that one had food in it. I'm going to go hang this one back up. No food in that. Didn't even make a hole yet. All right, put this one back. Oh, hopefully nothing went off. <laughs>